Hello, I'm Emma Hammett from First Aid for Life and OnlineFirstAid.com. Today I'm going to talk to you um, about safe travel. I love traveling. Um, I'm absolutely addicted to my annual holiday. It means, that, it means the world to me. And we've just got back from Colombia. So I'm used to traveling with my family and we've been traveling with them um, to some fairly adventurous places since they were quite small. So um, there's a few key things that I think are really important um, for you to consider before you go somewhere slightly more off the beaten track, particularly if you're traveling with a family. First thing, when you are planning your holiday, check safety alerts. Um, look at the Foreign Office advice to travel. Look at um, whether there have been um, earthquakes, volcanoes erupting, um, tsunamis, um, what the political situation is, and be aware. So yes, we have been to Egypt, we've been to Sri Lanka, we've been um, all sorts of places where there has been trouble, but we're they're going there with our eyes open. And there's some times when we actually wouldn't travel um, with small children. And most definitely, if uh, the Foreign Office advises you not to travel, you are not traveling and you will not be covered by your um, insurance either if you decided to. So just be aware of that. Have a look as well about things like if you're going to beaches and your beaches are important to you, see if there have been any reports about the cleanliness of the beaches. Things like um, Mexico and the Caribbean coast has been um, horrendously affected by seaweed. And people think, oh yeah, seaweed. But actually, if they don't clear the seaweed away, it can really spoil your holiday because it stinks. And you end up wading um, waist deep through the seaweed. So be aware what you're booking. And some of the advice you can look at, I mean, TripAdvisor, yes, it's not all proper advice, but actually there's an awful lot. And if you see um, repeated advice saying, oh my goodness, the beach was covered in seaweed, then the beach is probably covered in seaweed. So have a look, investigate, look at the reports. Sometimes you can actually look at live pictures of where you're going as well. Um, so go where and plan with your eyes open. Um, have a look as well and see where some of the other tour operators are going. So if you, we travel independently, but if you wanted to have a look and see what Audley travel, for example, Exodus or Explore, a lot of them will go to these places and they will go to very much the same spots. And uh, then you can have a look, you can decide if those are what you fancy, or you can then further explore and see what else is good to see um, just off the beaten track a little bit. Um, be aware of things like earthquakes and volcanoes and look at the local advice. So Colombia and Guatemala, they have a lot of earthquakes. So we read the local natural disaster advice about exactly what to do. Um, now my guys are, are much older now, and so we all read it, we all understood, and we all went through, you know, if we're out there and there is an earthquake, um, you know, what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to run outside? Are we supposed to you know, stay in our beds? And the advice is there. So read what the advice is and also sign up for the, lo the local alerts. You don't want to be the last person um, to know that there's a tsunami coming. So make sure you're aware and you're on the ball about it all. Same for health concerns. So be aware of snakes, spiders, contagious diseases, what sort of DMV you might get. Um, take a first aid kit that's adapted for the country you're visiting and the activities you're doing. So waterproof dressings if, it, you know, if you're doing a lot of snorkeling and things. Um, think about, you know, you might get sea urchin spines in. My family get really cross with me about the, the extent of the first aid kit I take. But you know what? They're very glad of it if we actually need it. Um, the other thing is, uh, if you would like us to, we can arrange um, a first aid course that is tailored to whatever holiday destination you're, you're going to and what activities you're doing too. So make sure as well that you're taking a more invasive first aid kit if you're worried about the sterility of needles and things. And make sure you are taking the appropriate malaria prophylaxis so look very carefully as to what is advised, what is recommended, how serious um, a risk you're at, 
and look as well as to how remote as you're staying in. So in Colombia, we were staying right in the middle of the jungle, um, right down the Amazon. Wow, it was amazing. Um, so we needed to take you know, specific things, look at what insect repellent they take. And to be totally honest, a lot of the things we used when we were out there were jungle remedies because they work better than Western medicine um, out there. So take advice. Find out where the nearest hospitals are um, to where you're going, if you're going somewhere more remote, and see what they've got. So have they got rabies um, injections should you be licked or bitten by um, a monkey, for example. Um, and make sure that um, if they haven't, that you have a plan in your head. Uh, and you might want to get the rabies vaccine before you go, because that buys you time. Still means you have to act quickly if you're bitten or licked in a wound, but it does buy you time and it means you don't then have to get the nasty gamma globulin stuff that um, um, you need. Um, if you um, are taking prescription medication, I would carry it in my hand luggage. I'd have a little bit of extra in my main luggage, but carry it in your hand luggage because main luggage can go astray and also you can end up with delays. I mean, our luggage got caught up and we ended up delayed in, in Bogota for, for 24 hours. So it can happen. Um, you may need a, an accompanying letter if you're carrying something like an EpiPen or a, an adrenaline autoinjector to explain why you need to have that on the plane. So think ahead and plan if that's the case. If you're traveling as a group, make a contingency plan for meet meetups, set up a WhatsApp group, have another way of communicating as well if there's no Wi-Fi, and it's a good idea to put fine friends on. You can remove them when you're back, but actually it's a good idea if you are traveling somewhere slightly more remote. Uh, and then it means that you can be more independent too. Know the emergency numbers for the place you're, you're um, traveling to. It may well be that 112 works, and um, that's the backup for Europe. It's meant to be the best of the rest of the world, but check, it might not be. Um, and make sure as well that what activities you're planning to do are covered by your insurance. So some um, insurance providers don't cover things like zip lining or quad biking um, or, I don't know, canyoning or going on a motorcycle. And for some, they require you to, do, to pay an additional premium. There is nothing worse than having an accident out there and find that you're not covered. Also ensure that you've got the right vaccinations. So um, we've got a blog that goes through um, what, hosp what um, travel vaccinations um, you might need. If you're traveling to an area that specifies that you need to have yellow fever, make sure you have it and make sure you have um, a copy of the, of the yellow fever vaccination forms so that you can show them. Those are a real pain to get replacements of. Um, and also make sure you give yourself enough time for vaccinations. So all sorts of really important things to think about. Pack your diorolite, um, have a look um, at you know local medicine as i said before as well and uh, you know see what insect repellents they use and work for them and what remedies they use afterwards obviously with your eyes open but um, you know enjoy your holiday it's a great adventure but just go there with your eyes open that's emma hammett from first aid for life and onlinefirstaid.com